Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to have a lot of fun, promise. And what you see here in front of me are two packages. The first one, it's by the way still fully sealed. I did not open this yet. I wanted to do this live in front of the camera. Is a close-up lens kit from Nisi. And uh, that is something very interesting because typically macro lenses cost you a fortune. There are cheaper ones available in particular from China. But people who follow me on my channel have seen me taking macro photos with very expensive lenses. And this kit here is really affordable. It's $139. Maybe you can get it cheaper somewhere, but in general, a very affordable way to enter the world of macro photography. And the second package here, also fully sealed, is a macro focusing rail. And that can be used for getting your manual focus precise. And it can also be used for focus stacking. And we are going to look into all of that in the course of the video. Of course, I need to say now, for the sake of good governance, if you want to call it that way, that Nisi sent these two packages to me for free. They asked me a few weeks ago if I would be interested in doing a review. I said yes, that's why I'm sitting here now. But there is no other dependence between me and Nisi. I'm not working for them. I'm not affiliated with their company. And they also do not compensate or pay me for that review. So you will get my own independent thoughts and impressions on everything we have here in front of us. People might also have noticed that the studio room I'm filming in here looks slightly different than usual because here in the background we have some nice flowers and my wife was getting them for me today in a flower shop. Flower shops are still open, not in lockdown in Switzerland. And since we have deep winter and lots of snow outside, there are no insects, which are my typical subjects for close-ups or macro photography. So we are going to unfold some creativity here by means of these flowers. As I said at the beginning of this video, I think it will be a lot of fun. I also have here in front of me a ring light with LEDs. And if the lighting is not strong enough to get my subjects bright and seen, I will use this one because people will ask me anyway, let me share what I'm using here. So this is from DER. It's the DRL and DRL stands for DER ring light, of course, 232 with a battery box and you can mount this on the camera. I might use this in the course of the video. I don't know yet, but just in case I have it already here in front of me and in good reach. The game plan for this video is the following. First of all, I will do a very quick unboxing of these two packages here to see what's inside and how these gadgets feel in my hands. Let's call it the look and feel. Second, I will look into the specs of this close-up lens kit to see what we can expect. And third, I will mount the lens kit on various top-notch professional cameras I have available here in our studio and in this way providing a very broad spectrum of experiences what you can expect if you decide to work with that close-up lens kit and we will also use of course the focusing rail and see how we can improve our shooting by means of this tool and now it's time to kick off the video. So let's start to unbox the close-up lens kit. Let's get a tool here and let's try to open this up somehow. Here we go. So let's remove the ceiling. Looking at the package now without the ceiling and all these light reflections, there is nothing written on the back. So we really need to look up the specs at the website of Nisi. And let's now further open this up. So here's another, I think, seal here. If we break this, Okay. Oh wow, this is nice. It comes actually in a pouch. So you see here, there is the logo of the company, Nisi. It's a very, I would say robust pouch here, which protects the close-up lens. And if we open this up here, we get the fully sealed close-up lens. And it's in another pouch to make sure there are no fingerprints on it when you open it up. So let's try to open this. And let's very carefully get this out here without touching on the glass. Here we go. Quite nice. It looks really good. And this is a full metal finish here. And you see here it says close up lens 77 millimeters, which is the filter size. And uh, as I said, we are going to look into the specs in a moment. Let's get this aside. Let's also get all the plastic aside here. And the box. And now let's look into the focusing rail here. Oh, 
All right, it's always a pleasure to unbox these kind of things. And the focusing rail already gives us a lot of information. I don't think it is very meaningful to look into the specs of a focusing rail. I'd rather show you how to actually adjust your focus and how to work with it in a moment. There is another seal here. And now here we go. So the first thing we get inside here is a little manual. Let's see if we can get the plastic off. So here you go, there's a manual. It gives you all the details on the screws and uh, you know, probably how to use it. We are looking into that later. Here we have another box. That's a pouch. So here's a pouch. Nice. So you can store this when you are on the move. Here is another box. That's clearly the plate you need to mount this and it always carries the logo from Nisi here. Looks actually quite nice. This is some nice mechanism here. I see it already because you can get this up and down very easily. It's very big actually, much bigger on usual tripod mounts and uh, I think this will be very convenient to use. There is some rubber here which protects your camera body of course in the usual way you know it from tripod mounts. Quite nice. And what else do we have here? Here I think is the rail. Yeah, beautiful. It's a full metal construction. It looks very solid and we will look into the features of this rail in the course of the video, of course. There is one thing I forgot to mention in the box of the close-up lens here because I didn't fully get everything out here. So here is a little instruction manual, I guess, but here, and that's important, there are adapter rings here and uh, these adapter rings are important if you want to mount the close-up lens on different filter sizes. Let's open this up here. Here you go. So this is 67 millimeters to 77 millimeter adapter. We saw before that the close-up lens has 77 millimeters. And the second adapter here is 72 millimeters to 77 millimeters. So we can actually go here for 72 millimeters filter size or 67 millimeters filter size or 77 millimeters filter size, which gives you some flex on the lens you want to mount on your camera body and then mounting the close up lens on the respective lens. Now let's look at the close-up lens again. And I mentioned it before, this is an all metal construction. It feels very solid in hand. It also has some weight, so it looks like a solid piece of glass inside here. It's actually beautiful. I like it a lot. And um, you have here your screw threads to mount this on the lens sitting on your camera body. And you have here on the front side also screw threads. And I use this later to actually mount my ring light in one case of the shootings I'm going to show. The specs say it's increasing the multiplication factor, but I would have phrased this differently and said the close-up lens reduces the minimum distance to your subject and increases the maximum reproduction ratio you actually can achieve with your camera lens combo. It features a double apochromatic optical element and has a multi-nano coating, which makes the close-up lens more resistant to dust and dirt and also enhances the sharpness of the close-up lens. Regarding the focusing rail, it's probably best to see this later in action, but at least I want to show a few features here. First of all, you have here four detachable foot nails and uh, you can just unmount them here. And uh, then, you know, you get just the slider here or the rail, if you want to call it that way, it's very easy. What's also remarkable, I think, and that's a good thing, if you are a proud owner of an Arca Swiss tripod head, you can mount this immediately. So I have here one. This is one of my uh, best uh, tripod heads I have and uh, clearly is from Arca Swiss here. I use this mainly with my face one because this one here is very good for fine adjustments for all the different angles you want to achieve. But if you have it here and you take the focusing rail, you can just, it's compatible, place it on top and then screw it firmly and then you have it immediately mounted. So there is absolutely no hassle coming with it. And I think that's nice. So we could call this Arca Swiss compatible. Then your camera body gets mounted on this one here. And I think I mentioned already, I like the size of your handle here because this is much better than what you typically have in uh, normal tripod plates. So here, for instance, is one I have and use. 
And look how small this is compared to what you have here on that Nisi tripod plate here. That is much better. And I think it's very convenient to actually use it. Now you can mount your camera and then you can just fix it here and then it sits firmly. So that's good. Now there are various other elements which I think are well built and also well planned when they constructed this gadget here. So there are all the engravings here we need. There are engravings here on top and you can use them for distance scaling and what have you. You have here the option to actually move on the rail the camera and you can do this of course in both directions. You also have here a slightly bigger element to do these moves and you see how small the movements are. So this is really good for fine adjustments as you will later see in the live shooting or you can get this little handle out here and then if you have it mounted firmly on your tripod you can just go for this which I think is then a quicker way of moving it on the slider. So that's quite nice. You have another screw here on the top and if you start to screw it out you can actually also rotate here. So there are different things you can do. It's 360 degrees. If you screw it in again, it sits firmly and does no longer move. Then it's basically very firm and fixed and uh, in this way secured. I actually used the focusing rail exclusively on a tripod firmly mounted and uh, it was a pleasure actually using these fine adjustments to get my subjects in focus and also use it for focus stacking. And uh, I will now go into live shootings. As said, I will do this with various cameras. So the game plan is that we do it with the Leica SL2 and the Hasselblad X1 D Mark II, the Canon EOS R5, the Nikon C7 Mark II, and the Sony A7R Mark IV. And we also will do it with different lenses to provide as many impressions as possible, driven by five top-notch cameras currently available in the market to see how this close-up lens and this focusing rail are performing. We start a live shooting with the Leica SL2 and the Aposomicron 50mm which is one of the sharpest lenses available in the Leica SL lineup and uh, clearly we are going to mount now the close-up lens on top of it so I have to remove the lens hood and the lens cap of course and I need a filter here because the filter size of the Aposomicron is not the 77mm I have on the Nisi close-up lens and that's why it is convenient to have these filter adapters. Now mounting the Nisi close-up lens and then starting the shooting, we will see that this is actually on the Aposomicron working quite nicely. If we look into the specs of the Aposomicron 50mm f2.0, we find that its maximum reproduction ratio is 1 to 5, so 20%, and that means that lens by itself is already capable of doing some close-up shots. And the minimum focusing distance is 35 centimeters, and we can reduce this now by means of the Nisi close-up lens. The focusing rail turned out to be very, very precise and you can precisely move the camera up and down. And here on the Leica SL2, I was in manual focus and uh, then I basically reduced or increased the distance via the focusing rail to this subject, which is my flower here, in order to get things sharp and in focus. Clearly, I also used the self-timer in order to make sure that there are no shakes and vibrations when the camera is mounted on the focusing rail and that one on the tripod. And here you see how the shot has been taken by the camera. And now we can have a look whether this is sharp and in focus. And then we go to the next step of the macro experiment here. The next step was to go for some focus stacking. And again, it paid back that the slider or focusing rail here is very, very precise in its movements. And depending on whether you want to do focus stacking front to back or back to front, you can basically go for both. You are moving the camera on the focusing rail up or down in tiny little movements, take various shots, and then use software, which I'm going to show in a moment, to actually stack these images to increase dramatically the depth of field of the stacked image. In this particular example for the Leica SL2, I took 14 frames, which I stacked together. Later, we will take much more frames in focus stacking 
and uh, demonstrate that focus stacking is really an absolutely necessary tool for close-ups and macro photography. The software I used for stacking the 14 frames is Helicon Focus. And you see it here at work, it aligns the images, it stacks them together after analyzing them and creates one final digital negative or TIFF file with a dramatically increased depth of field. Comparing now on the left hand side the Aposumicron without the close-up lens and on the right hand side the Aposumicron with the close-up lens, you see the difference how much closer I did get with the close-up lens to my subject here. And then comparing the single shot on the left hand side with an easy close-up lens and the 14 frames stacked image on the right hand side, we don't see here yet a dramatic difference between a single shot and 14 frames stacked. And that will become much more dramatic in the next shootings when I use true tailor lenses and get much closer to my subject. Maybe also sharing quickly my shooting parameters here. So this was all shot at an ISO of 100, which I will keep throughout the shooting in the course of the video and uh, the exposure time here was 0.8 seconds at an aperture of f14. Nevertheless you see some differences here so here is where the focus was sitting and here these images look kind of exactly the same they are sharp crisp look good but if we go a little bit away from the focus plane here you actually see that the stacking is increasing the depth of field on the right hand side compared to the left hand side and uh, in general I think we have some effect here as I said will increase this effect dramatically in the next samples we are going to shoot. I want to shoot the SL2 with another lens namely the Sumilux from the M lineup with the respective adapter because that's 90 millimeters f1.5 super sharp super crisp should actually give fantastic images and that's the next shooting we are going to do and here we'll also see how the stacking is really taking it to the next level. The minimum distance on the Sumilux M 90mm is 1 meter actually and its maximum reproduction ratio is 1 to 8.8 and that is not a good lens for close-ups and here the close-up lens on top of the Sumilux from Nisi really makes a big difference as we will see in a moment. It also will make a big difference whether we go for a single shot or for a stacked image via Helicon Focus. As an aperture I have chosen here f11 which I think is a good compromise already providing up front some depth of field but not having any diffraction kicking in. I will show both images the single shot with the close-up lens and the stacked image from Helicon Focus in Lightroom in a moment. Here you see Helicon Focus at work and uh, clearly here we will see a dramatic difference in terms of depth of field in the two images. So here are the two images, left hand side the single shot, right hand side the stacked image from Helicon Focus. Underlying were 25 frames and the shooting parameters were an ISO of 100 and it shows here an aperture of f16 but I was actually shooting with f11 and I mentioned several times on my channel that the aperture is not correctly transported between M lenses and the Leica SL body. So that's just an error here, it's an f11. The exposure time is slightly different because I was shooting in aperture priority, left hand side 3 seconds, right hand side 4 seconds and uh, here you see now clearly a lot of interesting differences. First of all with the Sumilux itself I would have never managed to get that close to that flower here and clearly here the close up lens was shining. Second my focus was sitting exactly here and you see that sharp on the left hand side here as well as on the right hand side. But if you look at the depth of field now from stacking 25 images, there is a huge difference between the two images. So if we look into that here, the right hand side clearly is absolutely crisp and sharp. And it's absolutely amazing how wonderful this macro image looks like with a Sumilux lens with a maximum reproduction ratio of 1 to 8.8. .8. So here I think that close up lens is really delivering from all angles and uh, it looks pretty nice. For stacking by the way I used again the Nisi focusing rail and did it manually for 25 frames, a few minutes of work but it really paid back if you look at the sharpness and clarity of the image on the right hand side compared to the left hand side. The next shooting will be with the Hasselblad X1D Mark II and the corresponding macro lens 120mm f3.5. The maximum reproduction ratio of that lens is 1 to 2 so with the close-up lens we might get even closer. And of course increase the reproduction ratio. The Hasselblad X1D Mark II has automated focus stacking but you need to make sure that the XCD 120mm lens is updated to the newest firmware. 
Due to automated focus stacking, we don't have to do this manually here. We had a focusing rail. Just going to focus stacking, choosing the number of frames. I went up to 50 frames here. So substantially more frames than what I had before on the Leica SL2. And then setting all the different parameters we have here. And then the camera will just do its work. So I can just relax and lean back and watch the camera taking 50 frames and then stacking them together in Helicon Focus again. As you can see here, for people doing macro photography, automated focus stacking in camera is a super useful feature. And I really wish that Leica include this in a future firmware update for the Leica SL2. I will now put the two images, the single one and the 50 frame stacked one side by side in Lightroom. So here you see the two images, left hand side, I try to be consistent here, the single shot on the right hand side, stacked shot with 50 frames. ISO was 100 again because I wanted always to shoot at the base ISO, aperture f11. So some depth of field already, but clearly for a macro shooting, not wide enough in terms of depth of field and aperture priority again for my shooting mode. Now, the first remark I wanna make is as a rule of thumb, if you put bad glass on top of good glass, you get a bad result. That's clear. So since we see here an absolutely first class result, I can tell you the optical properties of this $139 close-up lens from Nisi must be really good because otherwise it would take away the quality we get from the top macro XCD 120 millimeter lens from Hasselblad. And uh, if we now zoom into the image here, let's have a look what we find here. It's actually like small little bananas, but again, you see the depth of field on the right hand side, super clear, super crisp, super sharp where the focus uh, plane is. And um, I think in general, a very good result. If we look at that, if we go here into the inside of that flower, let's see you see how much detail you get on the right hand side. And again, it speaks for the quality of this quite affordable close-up lens on top of a macro with only one to two reproduction ratio to get closer, get a higher reproduction ratio and actually get a super sharp, super clean image here. The next combo we are going to play with is the Nikon C7 II with the standard zoom Nikkor 24 to 70 millimeters f4 and uh, this will of course be a classical candidate for a close-up lens. Because assume you have invested into the camera body and the standard zoom for travel or street or what have you, and uh, you don't have the budget for going for a fully fledged macro lens, then maybe that close-up lens for $139 can solve that problem for you and enable better close-up shots. The minimum focusing distance on that Nikkor standard zoom is 0.3 meters and its highest reproduction ratio in telezoom mode is 0.3 times. The Nikon C7 Mark II has automated focus stacking in camera like we saw it on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II. And it's actually straightforward to operate this on the camera. I'm going here for 30 shots, which I stack then later in Helicon Focus. And uh, you have to play a little bit with the uh, focus step width here. And there are some other parameters to tweak, but in general, a pretty straightforward process and then the camera starts its work. Looking at the two images side by side in Lightroom, left hand side single shot, right hand side 30 frames stacked is a pretty good result. Given that this standard zoom has only a maximum reproduction ratio of 0.3 times, we got much closer here and we also got a much higher reproduction ratio. And the shooting parameters ISO 100, f5.6 and 1 over 20 seconds at 70 millimeter tail zoom and here was where my focus was sitting. If you look into that, it's quite nice, but even here you see already how much the focus stacking did do for me. And uh, also you see again the excellent quality of that close-up lens on top of a standard zoom in the Nikkor C portfolio. And uh, if you look here, for instance, into the center of the image, you see how crisp this is coming over on the right hand side. It's really a good result. I would never have expected a standard zoom with any close up lens to get these kind of sharp corner to corner macro photos as we see them here. And again, the depth of field, of course, on the stacked image side is much, much larger. Next, I mounted my LED ring light and the close up lens onto the Canon EOS R5 with the 10 times travel zoom 24 to 240 millimeters and you see here how I can adjust my light on that ring light here and in this way brighten up the scene if I want so. 
and uh, clearly here we also wanted to get something special and I sprayed some water on the flowers to see if that ring light is creating reflections as a tiny little UFO in these water drops on the flowers. So let's see what we get and how this plays out with the close-up lens. The Canon EOS R5 also has automated focus stacking and they call it in the Canon world focus bracketing in camera and you see me here tweaking the parameters and this time I went even higher in the number of shots. I wanted to go up to 60 shots and uh, really get a lot of frames stacked together in Helicon Focus. And the camera will again do this for me automatically. There's nothing I have to take care of. And now let's have a look at the two results, single shot and stacked image. As you've seen in the video clip before, I was using the 240 millimeter tele setting here and uh, the maximum reproduction ratio on that travel zoom is 0.26 times and the minimum focusing distance is 0.5 meters. And uh, again, of course, we see consistently the same outcome as we saw on the previous cameras. First of all, the images are super crisp and super sharp. Let's look into it here. So if you look at that, that's the stacked one on the right hand side and the single shot on the left hand side. And uh, you see, for instance, here on that leaf on the flower that the focus stacking really delivered and you indeed see that tiny little UFO reflection here from the LED ring light in the way I wanted to have it. And again, it's a good result. These travel zooms are typically not super high quality in terms of optics and that close-up lens on top of it brought us closer to the subject, increased the reproduction ratio from its original 0.26 times and created a very nice macro image here in the way we've seen it on the other cameras before. And I think in general, again, a very good result speaks for the optical quality of the Nisi close-up lens. And uh, in this way, if you have only budget for travel zoom on the Canon EOS R5 with another investment of not much more than $100, you get a fully fledged macro photography setup here. Last but not least, before concluding the video, I also wanted to try out the close-up lens on my Sony A7R Mark IV with the zoom lens 70 to 300 millimeters in the standard FE portfolio. And uh, clearly this is again a good example for the use of a close-up lens because you need to have that tele zoom in order to really make the close-up lens shine. The Sony A7R4 has no focus stacking or focus bracketing. And I just wanted at the end of the video demonstrate another way you can do this without using the Nisi or some other focusing rail, you can just always give a tiny little push to your focus ring in manual focus and in this way shift your focus forward or backwards depending on from where you're shooting and how you want to extend your depth of field. And that will work in the same way as well as if you would use automatic focus stacking or a focusing rail, of course. There are really so many ways in which you can become creative in macro photography and so many additional tools, but even if you don't have the right tool, if you don't have a focusing rail, you can still work firmly on a tripod with your camera and use the focus ring to actually get that focus stacking manually done. It's a bit more complicated, a bit more tedious to some extent, but it works. For the Sony FE 70 to 300 millimeters, the minimum focusing distance is actually 0.9 meters, so close to one meter, and its highest reproduction ratio is 0.31 times. And for the last time, we now place the single shot on the left hand side and the stacked image on the right hand side with the close up lens on both sides. 26 frames stacked on the right hand side and exposure 0.4 seconds at the widest open aperture we can have at 300 millimeters, which on that lens is f5.6 and an ISO of 80, so even lower than 100. And again, the result we see here is fully convincing. The Nisi close up lens used on that tele zoom from Sony is providing very crisp, very sharp images. Let's look into that here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Clearly we increase the depth of field here by focus stacking. And uh, I should say there might be situations where you wanna have that blurry look and just have a pinpoint sharp, very shallow plane of focus here. But very often in macros, in particular, if you go for insects, you might wanna have the full subject sharp and then without focus stacking, this will not work, of course. I will stop the video here and conclude. First of all, that Nisi close-up lens on five cameras with actually six different lenses because on the SL2, we did shoot the upper Summicron as well as the M lens Summilux 90 millimeter did fully deliver. I think these images all have been very sharp, very crisp and actually of high quality. The second point I wanna make is that if you really wanna go for 
corner to corner sharp images, you will not get around to use focus stacking. And you can do this with this Neasy focusing rail, or you can do it with some other rail from some other manufacturers. It really doesn't play a role. You can also do it manually via the focus ring. I think that's the most tedious way of doing it. And in at least a few cameras we've seen here in my shootings, there was actually automatic focus stacking available on the camera itself in the camera body. And I think that's the most convenient way to do it, of course. There you get very likely the best result because you don't have inconsistencies in the way you are shifting around your focus manually. But clearly with that Nisi slider or focusing rail, you have the most precise way of doing it, much more precise than if you would use the focusing ring. I really had, you know, a lot of fun doing that shooting. And I hope you enjoyed that video too. If you liked it, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There is one video at least every week and there is more content to come, of course. In the meanwhile, stay safe and healthy and peace out.